today we're taking a look at Speed Drum from Appisonic. Speed Drum is a virtual drum machine that has everything pretty much on one screen, which gives it the speed factor compared to its competitors. So here is Speed Drum in the flesh, the interface. As you can see, everything is kind of on one page. Now there are a couple of extra down here at the bottom. You have the slicer, you have the sins and the master effects, and then you have the setup. So this section here, of course, this is the pad section or the sample section that you can expand this if you so inclined. And then the additional options that are visible on the single page is then selectable here okay and then of course over here to the left you can select the two different banks that you are seen as a complete bank here down here we have the reset round robins we have what traditionally is the MIDI panic button where you just stop all of the sounds from playing if you want to do that you do that here with the plugin, you get a distortion module where you can modify the bit rate, the sample rate, the wave shape. And this is a ring modulator. All right. And then the depth of the ring modulation. You get a filter section. The top filters are analog based, as you can see. The bottom ones are ladder based. The ladder filters come with the drive option very useful. You get a VCA style compressor here, so you get nice punchy drums. You get a transient designer here, tax sustain gain, and then you can actually clip the plugins. That's useful as well. You have the velocity controls here. You can have the volume respond to velocity. You got the pitch respond to velocity, and you can have the filter cut. That is to say, this here, the cutoff, respond to velocity a humanize option that allows you to humanize these various things. You have two send options that will respond to this section here. Of course, the overall output of that particular pad, you can adjust here. Also to note, if you hold the control button down, you can reset these knobs to their default positions. Down here you have the envelope, the volume envelope, attack, hold, decay, and release. Over here you have the pitch envelope. This section here you can re-trigger or you can do poly. In other words, when you hit the pad in re-trigger mode, it'll start itself over, right? In poly mode, it will continue to play but the second time you hit it, it will overlap itself. One shot and note on. One shot is just that. You hit the pad, it plays. Note on means when you hit the pad and you hold your finger on the pad or you hold your finger on the key, it will play until you let go of the key. Mute, solo, all right? The color for the pad, and then you can use this to drag the pad into your DAW. Here, you manage what pads cut what and vice versa here. The trigger, this is allowing you to select another pad to be triggered along with this pad. And then this is the output of this pad, up to 16 outputs. You have a browser that allows you to save favorite folders. As you can see, I have a number of them here already set and we'll load up a sample from here. Let's grab, yeah, we'll grab this as an example. This little button here is auto load. If you have that turned on, and I'll demonstrate, right now we have two BRX1. If I then click on another sample, it will auto load that sample into that pad. So if you've done something with that sample, remember to turn this off. You have the volume of the preview. You have mute for the preview. This allows you to change the display of what's shown down here. Right now it's on auto. Otherwise you can do favorites only or you can do information only. Okay. I'll keep it on auto. And then this here is the preview output that you can change as well. So that's the browser. You have 
options up here that you can go through and customize your workflow. Now, this bottom section is where you do your sample editing, right? So if you wanna change the start and stop time on your sample, then you can do that here. You can actually slice up your sample from here. So let's say we want just that, right? Hit slice, boom. You can reverse the sample, you can change its phase, you can change its normalization here. You can change it from stereo to mono or just the left and the right. You can randomize the sample. So if you wanna load a random sample that's in this folder, you can do that from here. You can also move the samples from whatever's next. But be careful with this because if you did do some modifications, it will undo those. On the left, we have some basic stuff that you can find up here, but it's separate from those. Volume, panning, pitch. You can mute and solo here. And this is per sample. The offset is useful because they need to fit in a certain pocket. Your pitch envelope, there is a stretching algorithm included in the 1.4 update. Now that's the waveform view. You also have a velocity view where you can layer up to eight samples per pad. The slicer option, now you can literally slice up drum loops and then that allows you to take those slices and drop them into a pad, right? It also has the stretch algorithm included in here as well. Then here is the sins and master effects so you can have delay and reverb that's built into the plugin if you like you can actually output that to a separate channel from the plugin and use effects on your DAW for whatever you like to use it for on the right is the master compressor you can also clip the output as well right and it gives you the option of a hard clip or a soft clip panning volume and this gain is how much you're pushing into the clipper. Finally, you have down here at the bottom, the setup tab. Now, this is the MIDI note setup for the plugin. This section here is the first 16. This is the next 16 for a total of 32. And the way that you assign your MIDI note to the pad, you have two options. You can right click it and type in the MIDI note number, or you can left click it and then hit whatever key you want it to respond to. Once you have a map set, you can save that map under here. As you can see, I have a number of ones in here. On the right, we have the MIDI continuous controller map. Um, it can be absolute or relative. And then you can set an actual project folder by clicking here. And I believe if you do any modifications, anything that you do in here will save it in that project folder. We can resize the GUI here. You can save the kit here. And then here you can start a new drum kit. You can load one. You can import these type of files, all right? Save the drum kit as. You can set the outputs, user guide, check for updates, and of course the about screen. This is your global volume. As you can see at the top, it says global volume. All right, once again, hold control down and click any knob or button to reset it to its default. And that, folks, is the interface for the plugin. So let's actually dig into using Speed Drum. Next, the hi-hats. All right, I'm gonna swap the snares out. All right, so let's get some drums in here. Uh, 
Alright, so we're gonna convert this drip sound to a background sound effect. bit of compression on the snare drum try to give it a little punch a little character well, I may change it later So far having everything on one screen is allowing me to move fast, that's a plus. Alright, so we're going to add some delay to the drip sound, so it becomes like a bed in the track. And this is one of the pluses of having the effects inside of a instrument plug-in. You don't have to go chasing after that extra stuff. All right, I think we need some extra percussion elements. Let's see what we can find. a little bit here just let's see okay there we go I'm filter these chord loops function here and one of these is oh it's an extra in here is it this one no nope, it's this one all right a little distortion on our pads and if you notice I have all four of them selected so whatever changes I make will affect all four of the selected pads. And here we're just getting some overall compression with the plug-in. You know, the typical trying to glue it together. A little bit of clipping. Let me adjust that volume back down. All right. And a little bass line in here. Let's see about these percussion samples I chose. Mm. A little pocket here. I'll probably just readjust those on the offset in the plugin instead. 
some extra tambourine, perhaps. Alright. Maybe a little ride symbol. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, this one's better. Alright, let's put that down. static in bank B. Put a tip on the kick drums. 
so that's the goal. There we go, money. Highly capable drum sampler that I think deserves your attention. And bonus, it's a little easy on the pockets. Check the link for the description. Outside of that, 